So where are the fish in any river? No matter whether they're near the shore or out in the heavy current, they're going to be near the bottom. And they're going to be there for several reasons. One is there's safety down there, there's some food down there, and there's little current so they don't waste a lot of energy. With check nymphing, your cast is upstream and your fly is heavy to take the fly straight to the bottom as quickly as possible. Your line is then pulled tight and the fly is gently pulled downstream slightly faster than the current is pushing the fly. And you hook set on any resistance. You're going to hook a lot of rocks and sticks and that's normal. You lose a lot of flies. But the goal is to get the fly to the bottom where the fish are. And you set on everything. Be sure to set on all change, whether you're pulling that fly downstream and there's a slight hesitation, set the hook. If your rod tip drops, set the hook. If you feel anything whatsoever, set the hook. So today we're here in Squamish where we have five different rivers with a lot of different fish sizes because we have rainbow trout, cutthroat trout, bull trout, steelhead, and Pacific salmon. And at any specific time of year, you can run into many of those and they range from 10 inches to 30 pounds. The basic check nymphing technique does not change whether you're fishing a small or large river or targeting small or big fish. So we've entered the water now and I'm facing the camera which is not the way I would normally, normally I would face that way but right now I'm facing the camera for demonstration purposes. Casting a check nymph is different than casting a traditional fly on a traditional fly line. And the difference is we're just casting a rod length of line, we're casting a weighted fly instead of a weighted line and an unweighted fly. The other difference is we're casting the fly in an arc to protect the rod tip and also to try and have the fly enter the water in a vertical trajectory. A similarity between traditional fly casting and check nymph casting is we need to cast 180 degrees from the target. Start our cast 180 degrees from the target. So we point the rod opposite of the target, 45 degrees upstream of me, and I bring down my rod as if I'm smacking a nail into a log with a hammer and the fly enters the water 45 degrees upstream of me. So what that looks like when I'm facing the river as if, as if I'm actually fishing is I position myself with a 45 degree cast upstream, rod tip starts 180 degrees from my target into the water with the fly cast is in. I've moved into position. I'm going to put my fly into the water 45 degrees upstream of my position. I'm going to stop my presentation 45 degrees downstream of my position. The working zone is from here to here 45 degrees up to 45 degrees down. That's the furthest your rod tip will travel. I start with my rod 180 degrees from my target cast it in with force, allow it to sink, and then adjust for height, pull the fly downstream, pause, allow that fly to swing to the surface, dangle it, bring the rod tip to the side, back to the starting position of my cast, 180 degrees from my target, and back into the water. And as I'm pulling that fly through this zone, I'm watching for any hesitation or pause in the line traveling downstream. Right about there, you're gonna watch that fly swing to the surface. Now, any insect that's actually hatching in real, real time is gonna rise up from the bottom to the surface. It's a very, very common place for a fish to take the fly. When that fly, the actual natural, leaves the bottom and swims to the surface, 
your fly does the exact same thing, swings up like that. It's in that time frame between the bottom and the top that that becomes a very easy food source for a trout. All right, so we've moved upstream now and the water's a little bit faster and a little bit deeper. And I still need to achieve depth with my fly. So the only way to do that is to cast further upstream. That'll give me enough time for that fly to sink down to the depth where the fish are. I've already chosen the heaviest fly in my box because we're fishing quite deep here. It's probably six or eight feet on the far side definitely four to six feet somewhere between me and the heavy current. So I need a heavy fly, but that heavy fly is still not going to be heavy enough to get to the bottom without a long upstream cast. So in order to achieve depth, I'm going to use what's called the Belgian cast or oval cast, where the back cast is low and the, the forward cast is high, and the fly enters the water upstream, fly enters the water, then I have some line management that I have to deal with. So to keep that fly sighter above the water, I need to do a hand twist retrieve here so I can keep my eye on that sighter during the cast or during the presentation. So again, the fly enters the water, I need to strip some line in, maybe hand twist to maintain tension to the fly and let that come through the zone. Cast it upstream, into the water, hand twist, expect to take somewhere in there, pause, fly comes to the surface.